Hey folks, Calvin here from Sparing Outdoors. I'm actually standing in a, a local forest. Uh, it's quite rough, it's quite close to where I'm from. But I don't want to give away the location or what forest I'm in because there's a, I'm doing a few things I'm obviously going to tell you about. Um, th this video here is all going, to, all going to be about a couple of plans I've got for 2019. And I don't really want to give away the locations for a couple of reasons once I tell you what I'm thinking of doing you'll understand why I'm not giving away the location but the first thing I was in, I was camping I'm not camping, sorry I was hammocking in this particular spot just in here a few years back with our ventures which is the older, the older section of our scout group and we were just doing bushcraft stuff and just happened to stumble across what I think was a pretty impressive badger set. There seemed to be a lot of badger activity. So what I want to do, I want to set up a, a, a camera trap and see if I can catch some of the badgers on video or just pictures. So I'm going to put it up over the next, uh, put it up here today and leave it for a few days and come back and then see what, that, what I've captured. But the last time I was here there was lots of activity. There was trails everywhere. There was, um, obviously there was a set. So I want to see what I can capture on it. So that's why one of the reasons why I don't want to give away the locations. Obviously stop badger baiters and that coming on. But it'll just be interesting to see what I find. And in this particular place, me and my friend have decided to do maybe have a bushcraft base. Now, and obviously the benefits of having a bushcraft base is Every time I have to go in and do bushcraft, I have to come in and I have to set up every time, whether it's a shelter, whether it's a wee fire pit, whatever I have to set up from scratch every time, which obviously eats into your urge when you're out. So at least if I had a bushcraft base, I can go there and I can go straight into a different skill without having to set up the basics. And that's why we want a bushcraft base. Now obviously, there's drawbacks from the bushcraft base and there's pros and cons. One of the drawbacks on the bushcraft base, if you go in and everything's, you more or less everything's set up, obviously, not that your skills will go down, but you're less sharp because every time I'm going out the month I have to set up from scratch, so you're always practicing your basic skills. While the bushcraft base won't have to do that as much. But in saying that, it gives you a chance to go on to all our skills that maybe time limits you when you are setting up your bushcraft base, isn't that? So it's pretty much for that reason. So if we have a bushcraft base, we can go there and practice some of the skills because everything's already set up and we just go for it and I can always just go do me or my other wee bit of bushcraft or just go in and set up from scratch anyway now the other drawbacks from um, a bushcraft base is no matter how how well you try or the best you do it and it doesn't matter whether it's bushcraft, hill walking, whatever being in a, a pristine environment you're always going to leave some sort of impact and if you've ever watched any of my videos no matter whether I'm out paddling, hill walking, bushcraft, whatever I live by a certain thing called the leave no trace principles which are seven principles within the leave no trace and I try my best to live by that guide and it's very important when you're outdoors and I think everybody should live by that guide because it's the least possible way you can leave any sort of harmful impact in the environment you're in so everybody's seen it no matter where I go I always live by the leave no trace policy so if I go into an area light a fire whatever disturb the area a wee bit I always try to clear it away cover the fires and make it as natural as possible so then if someone comes into that area they wouldn't even know that I had been there and even if it was a bushcrafter one in the area that I'd been in Unless they're looking for it, they probably wouldn't notice either. So obviously, the problem with having a base, a standing base, is you're going to have lean-to shelters and that all standing. Which again, if you're maybe not a well-educated person in the outdoors, I always like to take them down when I'm doing my weekends and bushcraft and that and leave the place as best I can, as pristine as I can leave it. Because it looks more natural when you walk into an area and you see a shelter standing. Alright, it's made out of all natural materials and it's doing no harm whatsoever. It just doesn't look natural in the area. 
but then you can look at it the benefits away then we shelters that you leave behind you can obviously animals not can make use of it and it's because it's natural it attracts insects and all sorts but the best policy for me is always take it down and leave it away but on a standing base you're not obviously going to do that you're going to leave it up and so the bit how i'm going to make it a more positive sort of bushcraft uh camper base is well we're going to go in and we'll have a couple of shelters we'll have a wee fire pit and obviously over the next year we'll try and improve it and keep it really tidy no rubbish whatever you know and that's what we're going to do now the only other thing you can hear the noise there just wondering what it was but what i would love to do to make a more positive impact to the wildlife and nature is i want to improve the area for the wildlife and nature which i don't see a lot of bushcrafters do but i would love to urge them to do what i'm going to do and it's even in the area over the last 10 years with the scouting or whatever i've done a lot of conservation work with the scouts well it's just putting up wee bird boxes bat boxes squirrel feeders doing surveys um putting up wee insect homes and whatever and i wouldn't mind doing that around my bushcraft camp and obviously put cameras up and see when, what, what i can catch and what i'm attracting into the camp it just gives nature and the wildlife in the area a wee boost so i'm gonna try and do that around our bushcraft camp and make it really positive for the wildlife and that as we use it because obviously when you're using it it'll have a wee bit of impact and i want to keep that area secret so that people don't come in and destroy it and obviously wreck the place so that that's our plans for 2019 and as i say there's a lot of dialogue there and i just hope you listened to all that and just took it all in and that's my plans but now i'm just going to go up here to this badger set and set the, the trail cam up or the the wee, the, the, the wee camera to see what i can see if i can catch anything over the next few days so i'll just go here and set it up and put the video on there so as you can see there as you can see there's lots of wee don't know how visible it is in the camera but you can see lots of wee natural trails or animals have been using these as wee runs and you can see them there going down right down the hill all over the place not easy to see in the camera but there's still a lot of activity here i haven't there's a few dig spots a wee bit of a dig spot on there as you can see it so definitely no badgers it's obviously all the creatures using these trails and that as well so there is still plenty of activity here i want to get on up and see some fresher dig spots and that and um, set the camera up i don't know if you can see this but it's very dark in here but i've definitely found the entrance to a set as you can see there's lots of prints there so what i'm going to do i'm going to set the trail camera up just on this wee tree here opposite the entrance and um hopefully we'll nab some animals this is my wee trail cam here so uh we'll set up this camera trap and then just leave it for a few, a few days see what we can find that's it set at the set so looking forward to see it coming back in a few days and hopefully that's it up right that i'm gonna catch or something so we'll see what we can catch so that's that set up i'm just leaving now to go check out this other location where a friend who's a forest gave me a tip off it they won't be doing much in that area so we could have a stanton camp a stanton base uh base camp for bushcraft or bush camp base camp whatever you want to call it and I'm um, looking forward to that. I'm just getting on my way out here. But I was just saying there's, I don't know if you can see, but it's quite hard to see with this wee phone, but there's activity everywhere of places being dug up and, you know, wee animal trails and that everywhere, which is great. So I'll be, if I don't catch anything, I'll be disappointed. But what I did see when I was coming in to this location was something that, that sort of, it annoys me, it upsets me a wee bit is motorbike scramblers have been just tearing up just at the, the bottom of the area where I was at and I'll, I'll just turn around to here so you can, really, you can see hey, this is not mountain bikes um, mountain bikes I, I, I get no problem, they're going in and they're doing whatever they do as, as I said Doing outdoor activities is very hard not to leave an impact. 
and mountain bacon's fine, and my books it's fine, they've got the trails and they stick to them and they do their thing, which is great. And I quite enjoy seeing mountain bikers out doing what they do. I see guys in scramblers. There is, it just, just it tears up an area. Mountain bikes leave wee tracks and it's fine. They regenerate and a lot of mountain bikers stick to the same tracks and they're professional at what they do. These guys here, they destroy up, they tear up walking tracks, tear up sides of mountains and everything and it's just, it's just an eyesore and I just don't like it at all but anyway it is what it is, people do it and don't like it at all and uh, at least at least walkers, hill walkers and that, and that use trails and mountain bikers that use trails to stay on the trails and whatever. These guys just create havoc when they get in round forests and sides of mountains. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you that anyway. So I'll move on to our next location. And as I said, there's a lot of dialogue in this video and not a lot of action because obviously it's just scouting the area for obviously the badgers and wildlife and the location. So I'm going to leave it here because if we go on out here, people might know where I'm at. So I will talk to you in a wee minute. Thanks for watching. I'm on my way to find the, the, the next camp, hopefully. Check out the location, but this is where I'm at. I don't want to show too much of it. But it's such a stunning area. I could not not show you the area. But this is all I'm going to show really of the area I'm in because I don't want to give away the location. But it's a beautiful place. I must say. This is um, quite a tough location to get to, but I suppose that makes it all the more appealing. It means there'll be less activity with people. But, um, a wee ravine here, a wee stream down there. I'm getting close to the location where I want to be, so let me check this out. Hey, I think I'm at the location. It's not a bad, you see there's a tree just fell over. There's lots of, um, as you can see, but there, you see there, there's lots of deadfall in this location. It seems quite good, it seems to have everything pretty much that we need, you know, you have to sacrifice in some sort of area and something. But this one seems pretty good, and if you go out under, there's a wee open area here. And it's quite tough to get at, it's about half an hour walk from where I parked. And it's well off the beaten track, you know, so it'll be well out of walkers. There is, as you can see, a wee burn or stream there. That's quite close to it, which is a big plus for water, a water source. There's a nice wee open area. As you see down there, sort of like a wee ravine I'm on here. Um, this is a possible location, as I said, because it's quite tough to get at. It's off the beaten track. It's highly unlikely any walkers are going to be up this direction. If they do, they'll probably just follow you up the ravine where it's a bit easier going because you're not fighting with branches and stuff so the only other people that might be in here again I see a lot of wheat trails but they're wild wildlife trails but the only other people that might be in here might be the foresters but as I said we behave ourselves and look after the area keep it sustainable as possible use the deadfall and as I say it's create a wee nature environment wildlife envir environment to um I suppose help the biodiversity in the area and check out the biodiversity in the area with putting up some wee boxes and things. So that's the plan. I'm quite happy this area. I have one more spot to check. And I'll, have, I'll be checking that spot. I'll be checking that spot next one day. But this is up here. This is an 8 out of 10 for me. I'm quite happy with. It's a bit hard to get to. The other place is a bit easier to get to, which it could be its downfall. So. I'm going to sit down and have a wee cup of tea, and then head, head on. That's a wee cup of tea ready, I've got a steak sandwich on me. I um, just did that wee branch there so I can sit on with the rabbit skins and have a cup of tea. Then I have a tag to discuss, and I'll tag somebody in it as well. Um, so that's enough for that. Right guys, this is my wee cup of tea, I'm just going to have a cup of tea before I go. I had the binoculars there, I'm just going to wee scout around on the way out. It's a nice high vantage point up here to check out the area. And um, just to see what's about, to see if there's any oil areas I could use to get the hat to fix up. Um, 
So I got tagged in this thing from a guy called Ken. He's from sunny California. Um, he has a page called um, Easy Tips and Tricks etc etc. I think that's the name. I hope I've got that right Ken. And he tagged me in just a wee short tag. And a couple of questions was how, what's my background? How did I get into the outdoors? And the other one was what has or who has been my biggest influence in doing what I do and getting into the outdoors and that's pretty simple as a child I was very lucky um, both my father's side and my mother's side both had farms and I spent a lot of my childhood on the farms with a lot of all my cousins and uncles and whatever and just helping them on the farm not that I did much help but by helping them on the farm and just being around my uncles on the farm and my older cousins who were slightly older me because I was one of the younger cousins you learnt a lot of knowledge from them guys just telling me you know what type of tree that was what wee bits and pieces of plants that knew were edible that they would have ate as children that was taught to them throughout the farm and the other thing obviously in the farm because when my dad was growing up my dad was 68 I think 69 and he was the middle of his 10 brothers and sisters and he was the middle one and when he was growing up in the you know the, the 50s and 60s a lot of the farming was sustainable or not uh, self-sufficient so they would have done a lot of their own crops and looked you know butchered a lot of their own animals and things so there was a wee bit of knowledge that he had and even in just things from sharpening shears my grand was very good that you just would have picked up a lot of this knowledge from them by just being around them so that would give me a good start in life and then just being my cousins playing in the forest and playing in the hills and the farm you know, you just picked up things outdoorsy that you didn't really know you were doing, you were enjoying. So that was one of the things that got me into the outdoors. Um, I was always very sporty. Uh, I love football. Um, I love soccer or football, Gaelic football. I love soccer and just love playing sports. And then that sort of diversified me into other outdoor sports. And that battle come to that next. The biggest person who was the biggest influence in my life would have been probably my father. As I said, he was very outdoorsy as a, as, a, as a young man, and obviously, even now, he's out doing a lot of walks and that with his uncle or with his brother. And he's also, he was always in construction, so he always had the hands on him to build things and do shelters and that, which the two things that my dad would have been very good at would have been bushcraft and, you know, hiking and pioneering and things like that. And just building stuff with hands, being a builder, he's very good at it. And he's, he's a very talented man when it comes to building things he's a joiner and so he would be the biggest influence and he also helped start the scout group in my town when I was six or seven he was one of the founding members and leaders that was in our town that started our scout group and so between him and scouting have been the biggest influences in my life and then obviously when he was in scouting me and my father would have looked up to him that the things he was doing I was learning off him we're doing all this bushcraft and things and learning hiking and then being in scouts it got you into all our sports like paddling sports walking, climbing, whatever, it took you into a lot more outdoor sports and it scouting just hooked me and I learnt a lot within scouting and I'm still learning, you know, I keep learning until the day I die and the other thing about scouting, it led me into my first job, well, well one of my first jobs which was once I left school I went and worked in an outdoor centre and you know, worked in an outdoor centre for a few years and even at that, I was getting my own qualifications in the outdoors, whether it was um, for paddling or hill walking or whatever. I was just building a repertoire of qualifications in the outdoors while taking groups out. And then obviously getting the outdoor first aid and things. So that's how I sort of expanded into the outdoors. And I'm, I'm in, because I'm in the outdoors now, I know lots of people in the outdoors and I keep learning of them. They learn of me. We share tips and tricks. And that's generally my background in the outdoors. Now, I, I, keep, I still do a lot of my outdoor stuff with scouts. Uh, or work with a school or local school doing their Duke of Ed expeditions or their President Ward expeditions. Uh, I still do bushcraft with the scouts and that, and I do work with groups anytime they ask me when I can. So that's my background in outdoors, and I sort of dabble in lots of outdoor activities, not just specialising one. And I'm always really interested to learn more and more. As you say, knowledge is power, and I'll keep learning to the day I day. That's really my background, how I got into it. So probably my father. And scouting has been my biggest influence since influences and what I do in the outdoors. Um, the person I want to tag in it 
is a cheeky Welshman. I find him really interesting, funny guy. I think he's called Buddy Back or Buddy Batch, whatever you want to say it. I'm going to tag him and see what his background is and see how he got into the outdoors. So that'll be interesting to see. And um, that's really it for this video. So, um, as I said, there's a lot of dialogue in this video and this, I can't really get around it. I've sort of given me a couple of plans for New Year. Now, that's not all what I'm doing. I'll still be doing my paddling. I might do, I might do a wee bit of climbing this year. I haven't climbed in a wee while. Uh, I'm not a big climber, I'm a baby climber. And um, I'll get out, get out do a wee bit more. I'll do a bit of pioneering. I've always said I'll have to do showings, but I haven't really got around it. And that's really my plans for the whole year. Just keep enjoying myself. As I says, having this base, base camp, once I start getting that set up, it'll save me loads of time and activity. So when I'm, when I'm going to do bushcraft, I don't have to set up from start. I can just get tucked into whatever I want to do and finish off what I did the last day or whatever. Uh, because time is a premium, I only have Sundays now and evenings. And it was a different four or five week, or four or five years ago, I could have went away for a week, full weekends off, and did lots of things. So I had a lot more time to do things, so it was more exciting. So at least if I have a bushcraft base, I can build on it. It might take me longer over weekends to do it because there's only so many, many times, so many hours in the day I can do it. But at least I'll get to do a wee bit more because I've limited time. So that's the plan for this year. And uh, guys, sorry for boring, boring you all, but it is what it is. This video of warning you at the start. Um, I'm thankful that you do watch my videos and uh, comment on what you've seen. And uh, I am. Um, as I said, I've caught up on a lot of videos now over Christmas and I will start gradually keep catching up and watching you. So thanks for watching my videos. If you haven't already watched, please subscribe to my channel, give it a wee like. Leave a comment if you want. Um, check out our Facebook, our Instagram and Snapchat, all sparing outdoors. And that's pretty much it. Again, just thanks for all your support and thanks for watching guys. All the best and I hope you all have a really good new year. And this is the end of my outdoor trip in 2018. I'm going to go to the coastline now after eat this with a child and the wife. And that's me to the new year. We'll start off in the new year with a bang, hopefully. So all the best, guys. Thank you.